What's going on everybody? Jojo back with another video. And as you can see by the title, Chipper Jones Collections, it's done. No money spent. And I'm here to give you every bit of info and every bit of knowledge that I have. That way you can get them too. Hopefully get them done quick. Now every tip that I went through and everything that I've done, I want to make sure I give it to you. I'm not going to leave nothing out. I'm going to go through it the same way I did from start to the moment that I got them done. If you like no money spent content like this and you want tips and tricks on how to get collections done and how to just make stubs in general really quick even xp methods go ahead and drop a like on this video hit that subscribe button turn on that noti bell so anytime that we go live or we post a video you're the first one to see it you can ask questions i always answer them we're going to get you the collections done right now so make sure you follow along step for step and you'll have chipper in no time but as you can see we got chipper in the lineup i know what you're thinking why is he not at third i don't want to take vlad jr out we're going to get straight into everything first step go over to collections my first tip to anybody is understand and how these collections work and what I mean by that is how is the market going to work from launch to now my game plan coming into this was I needed to get the 90s diamond in a specific division and that's what I was going for first did I want to get trout first or did I want to get all the 90 diamonds because there's more 90s in the a in the NL than there is in the AO and you have to decide you can't do both at a time I mean you could it just I feel like it'll take a little longer what you want to do is you want to make a game plan stick to it don't vary from your game plan and just to attack it head on my game plan was to attack the NL because of Acuna because of DeGrom at the time Arenado there was all these 90 diamonds there was Mookie there was um, Cody Bellinger Tatis was kind of high in price as if he was a 90 so I felt like attacking the NL was going to cost me a little bit more it was going to take a little more time and so what you're thinking is why not just go ahead and attack the cheap collections let's do the Marlins and let's go do the the Mariners and the Rangers. No. And the reason that is, is this tip right here that I've learned from last year and this year with collections is 90s diamonds, the uh, high 90 diamonds rise in price throughout, whereas golds and low diamonds fall in price so you're not wasting you're to me you're wasting time going for those golds and those those diamonds those low ones first because those 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 are going to go down in price over time whereas if we look at acuna now he's at two hundred eight thousand buy now 191 sell now and if we look at his market just from like two weeks ago he was below 150k that's how the 90s work you go over here to degrom he's now 161k about two weeks ago he was below 120 garrett cole 127 you look at his market two weeks ago he was at 80 that's how the market works trial is at 400k he was about 300k about two weeks ago i knew coming in that i needed to get those cards before they started rising in price and i was able to do that i was able to get every card but trout early and so i ended up maybe spending an extra hundred thousand from trout going from 300 to 400k compared to had i went for all the low diamonds first which always go down in price lindor's at 11k now two three weeks ago he was almost at 30k yelich is a good one because yelich was going for about 40k he's still going for about 40k relievers are always going to hold their price devin williams has went down so to me you want to attack these soda's probably another really good one soda was going for i think 80,000, and he's down to 30,000. so you want to attack these the high 90s first and i felt like the nl had more of them it was going to cost me more so i was just going to get through that quick so come into this with a game plan my next tip after you have your game plan and you're sticking to it whether you're going to get the al done first and get trout or you're going to get the nl done and get those 90s diamond is to figure out how do you want to attack it me personally I did showdowns the reason i did showdowns was because of what it gives you so if you look through it it gives you these four live series players that's bronzes and silvers that you don't have to pay for hopefully you get orioles in these because those are typically more expensive so you get a few of those you get 16 team affinity packs you get stubs throughout, and then you get four balling as a habit packs. If you're able to finish all six of these, that gives you 24 balling as a habit packs and about 100 team affinity packs, which gives you a good chance at a diamond. It guarantees you golds with the balling as a habit pack. That goes a long way towards collections. And of course, if you follow the channel and this isn't your first video here, 
you know the main thing that I did to do collections was flipping the market. Now I have a tutorial on how to flip the market and what we do here to flip the market to make all these stubs that we have made to complete collections. So I'll make sure that I, I leave that in the description down below. Be sure to go check that video out if you don't know how to flip the market or you just want some tips on how to do it. I give you different methods. But if you know the channel, you know that we look at live series golds, typically have decent margins. They have enough recently, but we do that. And we also, this is the money maker to me is the gold uh, equipment. Gold equipment has such good margins. I'm legit making 100,000 to 200,000 stubs every couple hours. I'm a guy who doesn't have a lot of time. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you probably don't have a lot of time too. And that's what I'm here for. To make sure that you can get the cards that everybody else has without having to spend 15 to 20 hours on the game a day to do it what they're paying for you can do it no money spent too and spend two hours on the game a day like I do so I'm not gonna go too much into detail with flipping cards because we already have videos on the channel about that we've done that multiple times I want to give you other tips on how to get it done outside of just flipping cards because I know everybody doesn't like work in the market I know everybody doesn't want to sit in the marketplace all day so one of my biggest tips is if you want to play online attack one game mode at a time. The reason I say this is because you have rank seasons, you have BR, you have events. Me personally, this time I was attacking BR once I was getting close to Trout because I decided that look at this. This Clemente is still going for 40k even though there's only 11 days left on this program. And we're close to him. And I knew getting close to Trout I was going to need some extra stubs. So I was going for him. But if you're one of the first ones to get this Clemente, if you just go straight into BR, so don't play rank, don't play events. If, if BR is where you want to attack at, attack it. Go for it. This card was going for about 67000 even higher than that if you look at it but he was about a hundred thousand for a few days if you're one of the first ones to be able to get to him that's a hundred thousand stubs but even now 40k is a good amount of stubs to go towards collections as well as this one only 10 points later for 84k so just between this Brett and that Clemente and you should be selling everything because at the end of the day if you're on this video you want collections if that's your number one goal then and none of these other cards matter you sell them you can pick them up later but for now the only goal should be getting Poppy, Soriano, Chipper. And by doing that, you have to sell these cards here, make 120, 130,000. Now, this George Brett was going for about 200K within the first five, six days. So you could have made, if you were one of the first ones to get him along with Clemente, you could have easily got Trout pretty much just by getting them too. And throughout the program, you also get multiple other cards, which are the BR cards, which we're going to get into here in a minute when I give you a couple investment tips to make stubs to go towards collections. But you also get more ball is a habit packs you get stubs i don't you get regular packs or you get a regular pack but that's more cards that's more chances to either pull diamonds or more golds that goes towards collections while you're picking up those high 90 diamonds you don't have to worry about those golds no more because you're pulling them while doing the program and then this also goes for events which had miguel cabrera for the first week going for over a hundred thousand smoltz going for forty thousand and rank seasons where those cards were going for about eighty thousand to a hundred thousand i think rank seasons is the least worth it i feel like br gives you the most which is why i attacked br but you choose which one you want to attack but if you choose to do one i would stick to it i wouldn't try to get 10 points here and then go to events for 10 points because at the end of the day you're losing time which means you're losing stubs and that's the point of the channel is to try to maximize your stubs as quick as possible now we'll be back in br here in a minute because i'm gonna give you an investment tip that can make you a lot of stubs which can go a long way towards completing collections my next tip and one of my biggest tips that most go, it goes unnoticed so often, go into your inventory and clear out your duplicates. You would be surprised even while you're going throughout collections, how many times because of dailies giving you players, dailies giving you packs, all the packs that you're pulling from events that you chose to do or from showdowns. And now you have so many duplicates and you go through here and I promise you, you clear out your binder, you might have 20, 30,000 just laying in here between your duplicates. We look at a player like like Tanner Scott, who's a low bronze going for 143 stubs. Another low bronze going for 115 stubs. And even some commons that you can find through here. I had a couple duplicates that were going for 1,500 stubs that were just chilling in here. So you want to make sure you go through your inventory and go through here and just see how many duplicates you have because they serve no purpose. You can't collect twice and it counts. After you do your collection or while you're doing your collection, go 
through and make sure you don't have any dupes, sell them. But it's not just with these players. You would be surprised how much you have within your equipment. I was going through my equipment earlier today and I had a glove. It was this glove right here. And I think it's going for like 2000 yeah, 2200 And I just had it laying there. I'm not using it on my cap, nothing. It was just there. I have bats at the bottom down here that are going for 140 stubs and I have three of them. I'm not locking that in. So that's literally almost 400 stubs or that is 400 stubs just chilling there in your inventory per bat. So you go through here and look how many bats I have from daily logins and from packs that you just randomly pull these. You have a bunch of these all throughout your binder. Next thing you know, you just gain 10 to 20,000 just clearing out your binder. Same thing with sponsorships, unlockables and stadiums. Some of those quick sell for a lot. The stadiums right now, the diamond stadiums are going for over 3,000. I don't know how I had a couple, but I had a few of those as well. And if you go back through your inventory, I'm going to reiterate this tip. Please make sure you're selling off cards that are sellable. I had a Dominguez challenge in my inventory. I sold them. I had an Austin Riley. I'm a Braves fan. I sold them. I sold my inning balls. If you're going for collections, I'll say this one more time. If you're going for collections, you sell off everything that is sellable until you get collections. If you want the Dominguez, sell them at first, get collections done, pick Dominguez back up. Same thing I'm gonna do with Austin Riley. Now that I'm done with him, I'm gonna start collecting every card because this isn't the only collection. Just keep that in mind after you're done with this collection. Once you're done with collections, there's still a whole nother one to come after this. A big tip that I have is being smart within your investments. Now you'll find a bunch of investment videos on YouTube. I'm not here to give you tips on who I think may go diamond, who you should invest in, but there are some smart investments that are honestly very minimal risks that some don't talk about that are the easiest way to make stubs. And what I mean by that is, if you go over here, the monthly awards, before these came out, you were gonna need these Tops Now cards because you needed that last year. But a lot of people didn't know that and you could have came through here and bought some of these silvers for four or 500 stubs and they flew up to 4,000. Some of the golds for 2,000 and they flew up to six, 7,000 and the diamonds were crazy. And you could have invested in those and made hundreds of thousands of stubs just off of doing Tops Now players that you could have bought. Or when Tops Now or when this program first dropped, you could have came to the marketplace, the margins were wild and these cards were flying off the board they were so easy to flip that was money to be made right there so that's what i mean by smart investments that are very minimal risks that can go a long way towards completing collections compared to buying 15 john carlos stanton's at 7,000 stubs and he's not even guaranteed to go diamond a big investment tip that i have personally that i haven't seen nobody talk about and i was going to make a video on it but i decided to put it in this one right here because i want you to be able to complete collections just like i did and and this was something I did, which made me a lot of stubs. And I, like I said, I didn't see not nobody talking about it. If you go over here back to BR and you go over here to the BR program and you look at these silver cards, this Gagne is going for 975 stubs. The only place you can get these cards right here is in BR. This Deekman's going for 4,500. This is the only place you can get them. It's got 11 days on it. I don't suggest you buy it right now, but when there's about a day or two left, some of these prices, because people are about to get all of them, people are going to sell them. The price is going to go down a little bit more. So with about two days left, I would buy a few of these. And the reason being, I did this on the last BR program. This is the only place you can get them. So when this inning's over, they're going to go up in price. The proof I had was I bought about 10 Chapmans for about 700 stubs, 900 stubs, right before the fifth the first inning ended right before this one started and if we come and look at chapman now he's going for 4900 4100 if you sell right away but never never sell now put in an order he's going for 49.99 almost 5,000 stubs i bought 10 of him i should have bought more but that was about 40,000, 50,000 stubs I made just off of him. And there were plenty of other cards just like him. This Griffey will probably go up in price. If it if it's a BR card, I suggest investing in them about two days before. Now, will they shoot up to 5,000, all of them? This Chapman's usable on a lot of budget teams, but... I truly believe, look at Jay Bruce. I'm pretty sure he was the other one, right? I promise you, you will not fail. This is a minimal risk, high investment. You can make so much off of just investing in those BR cards because they're going to skyrocket in price. And I suggest selling them right away as soon as the program's over because you never know when they might try to hand them to us out of a conquest or something. So get the stubs you can, get out. Because at the end of the day, you just need the stubs to complete collections. That's one of my biggest tips right there. Now, one more method that we did 
did utilize. And like I said, I was going to tell the truth about everything that I we've done because I want you to be able to do it too. And one thing that we did do was the ball player glitch to get our XP up so that we could get through the inning program. And we sold our inning bosses and we sold, you know, we sold the perks and we sold the diamond equipment. And we did make a good amount off of that. Now, if you want to know what that XP glitch is, hopefully it's not patched by the time this video comes out. I'll leave the link to the video we posted on it. Just go check it out and you can do it as well. Get your XP up. You can make XP stubs. And I mean fast. I was maxing out my players. I did one today in about two hours from silver to diamond. And it gives you a good amount. Bronze gives you 10,000 total because you get 5,000 at the midway point, 5,000 at the end, 6,000 for silver, 8,000 for gold, 11,000 for diamond. And you get each of those twice. And there's, I think, six different archetypes that go diamond. So you can do this multiple times. I suggest doing it with the pitcher because it goes quicker. So that's a big tip to me that you can do. It's all about being smart and utilizing your time correctly. There was not one moment that I was on here wasting time. I probably sacrificed a little bit of fun. I haven't even played around with Stadium Creator. But now that I have it done only three weeks in, I can now enjoy everything about this game. Now, if you remember me saying that there's another collection coming at the midway point, you played last year, it was Trout, two years ago, it was Honus Wagner. You pretty much need everything for that. So once I got done with collections, I picked everything back up that I had besides the prospects, and I'm keeping them for the long haul. Every card I have from here on out, I will be keeping. So before collections, before chipper, sell. After you get chipper, keep. Because I promise you, you don't want to get to that midway point five months from now and be unprepared and have no cards. And now you're paying 100000 150000 for a card just to get those midway point collections done. But we will have more tips coming out before then to help you with that collection as well. The goal of this video is to help you get Chipper Jones or really any card in general as quick as you want. Because like I said, I don't have a lot of time and I know a lot of y'all are pressed for time too. So if you like this kind of content, once again, drop a like, comment down below if you have any questions or follow me on Twitter and DM me if you have any questions. I always respond to everything. I make sure to show y'all love because you're consistently showing me love. Please hit the subscribe button and that noti bell. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers and I know I've said this but we're kind of far away but I know we can get there together me and you. If you like this I enjoy pushing this content out and I hope you enjoy hearing it and I really hope it helps you out. As always until the next video peace love and until next time.